What's up, Blazies? It's Casey Ario, founder of Blaze Group and your host of Blaze Group Radio. I will be talking about the intersections of Black womanhood, entrepreneurship, news on the culture, and healing as we climb. I launched Blaze Group after spending a decade in corporate America structuring multi-billion dollar loans for large tech firms, but never once working on a deal team with another Black woman. I left to take world-class knowledge to the streets. Blaze means building leaders and accepting zero excuses, and we go beyond the bare minimum. More than solutions, we create lifelines that help Black women become as limitless as they feel. Snuggle up to this episode. May it feel as safe and nourishing as Big Mama's house did. What's up, Blazies? It's Casey Ario, founder of Blaze Group and your host of Blaze Group Radio. I will be talking about the intersections of Black womanhood, entrepreneurship, news on the culture, and healing as we climb. I launched Blaze Group after spending a decade in corporate America structuring multi-billion dollar loans for large tech firms, but never once working on a deal team with another Black woman. I left to take world-class knowledge to the streets. Blaze means building leaders and accepting zero excuses, and we go beyond the bare minimum. More than solutions, we create lifelines that help Black women become as limitless as they feel. Snuggle up to this episode. May it feel as safe and nourishing as Big Mama's house did. What's up, family? We are back. It is September 12th, and man, has it been an interesting week. We had uh, Shannon Sharp on IG Live, like really doing the take. We had the incomparable Kamala Harris debate that man. And yesterday, we heard official news of the Fearless Fund settling its lawsuit, uh, the case being dismissed, and the grant program for Black women closing. But, but, what is important to state is that yesterday, Arian Simone, the co-founder and CEO of the Fearless Fund, gave a very important message, which I'm going to share with you today, that captures the context that so many of the major media outlets left out, right? And this is why it is important that we tell our own stories using terms that are relevant to us, okay? And examples that we resonate with because they're going to always, 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 (laughs) from the lens um, that just miss for marginalized folks, marginalized folks, right? That they're not, they're they're not um, really nurtured or exposed to understand, right? And so, let me start by sharing Arian's words about this case, okay? Right? Because as so many outlets were saying, the Fearless Fund closes grant program and the lawsuit is settled. Uh, she gave important context on why this is a victory. Okay, and we need to hear words from her and share this story and amplify this message and understand what it means about the times that we're in. So Erin and Simone said on our Instagram, sound the alarm and share. To God be the glory. It's been over a year of being in a federal court case and now it's finally dismissed. A few things that need to be clarified. Number one. This is a win, capital W-I-N, and positive outcome for the Fearless Fund in our community. Number two, the U.S. Federal Court of Appeals 
Stop the Fearless Drivers Grant Program for Black Women on June the 3rd, ruling, suggesting we were in violation of the law. This program has not been operating since it entered the appeals court back in the appeals process back in September 2023, and it was at its conclusion of the grant program when the court case began in August 2023. It was designed to award six people in one year, and it was at its end when the case began. So what this is saying is back in August of 2023, that's when they were initially sued. This was about two months before we issued our 2023 State of Black Women Owned Businesses report where we outlined what had taken place, right? This came on the heels of a man called Edward Blum, okay, uh, taking the case all the way to the Supreme Court to end affirmative action, right, in college admit admissions, right? And he won that case at the Supreme Court level, um, basically striking it down, affirmative, down, affirmative action down at, at Harvard and the University of North Carolina. And then he went on to the Fearless Fund, okay? Strategic, right? He was playing chess. But Erin is going to explain here how she too is playing chess. So she's saying the program, yes, they're closing it, okay? The grant program, but it was already coming to a close in August of 2023 that this program was only awarding six entrepreneurs per year, Black women, but six per year, right? And um, they hadn't been issuing any of these grants since this began, right? Since these proceedings, these legal proceedings began. All right, she says in number three, we strategically avoided a Supreme Court ruling. The deadline to appeal our appeal has passed because a ruling not in our favor at the Supreme Court would have ended minority-based funding across the country, and that would not be wise. We have already seen the Supreme Court ruling for the colleges in the front of action, for all colleges and schools and admissions, right? So this is chess for her. She did not want to make this at the Supreme Court level. She settled, excuse me, before it got to that, that place on purpose because she knew that Edward Blum would try to use it as precedent, right? Um... And she will go on to tell you why. Number four, she says, elections have consequences. We have had three federal rulings in this process where four Trump appointed judges ruled against us. Two Clinton and one Obama appointed judges ruled for us. So it's four to three, right? Three in their favor, two from Clinton and one from Obama, but four from Trump. She said, the writing is on the wall of who wants this work to continue and who does not. Be sure to vote November the 5th. So our vote has power. We are the battleground for democracy. Make sure you, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, all of them vote alongside you on November the 5th so that we can get people in the office who support us being funded as Black women. Right? Number five, she says... This work is important because the statistics for the underfunded are overwhelming, and this is why we have invested millions of dollars and awarded grants to over 500. Number six, any false narrative floating that anyone is claiming we are not moving forward at the, at the Fearless Fund is not true. What is true is that we are proud to announce our new $200 million debt fund. for under-resourced entrepreneurs, male and female. So they are reimagining what this work looks like for them, right? So they're starting a $200 million debt fund for me and women who are under-resourced. And then finally, number seven, she said it was the one grant program that the U.S. Appeals Court stopped. Okay, this is the Strivers Grant Program. It's funding six entrepreneurs per year. This new program will touch over 3,000 entrepreneurs that sounds like a win to me. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You heard it from Arian herself, right? Because many of these publications that um, were sent to iPhones, right, uh, don't have this spin. But this was all strategic. She's very happy about this. And I definitely would be remiss if I didn't share what the former CEO of the Fearless Fund, Ayanna Parsons, 
said as well, uh, she's also a co-founder. She said, while the Fearless Fund versus American Alliance for Equal Rights case, so American Alliance for Equal Rights is the nonprofit organization that Edward Blum started. He founded it. That's the same man that went and stopped affirmative action, essentially, uh, essentially at the Supreme Court level and who sued the Fearless Fund. She said, while the Fearless Fund versus the American Alliance for Equal Rights case may have ended, the fight is far from over. I hope what this case showed the world is that you actually can mobilize the masses and stand for what's right, that you can be the change you want to see in the world. We need thousands more funds that support marginalized and underrepresented founders. We need thousands more corporate leaders of color to hold board and CEO seats. We need to forge ahead in closing the wealth gap now more than ever because money and lots of it is what it's going to take to eliminate the disparities that exist across all facets of life for marginalized people. I love Ayana. She uh, is no longer the COO of the Fearless Fund, but she is living offshore with her husband in a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, residence and, and piece of land, really enjoying right the fruits of her labor in this lifetime. Right. And I am one who aspires to the same thing. I actually did do it. <laughs> okay. um, I started my career in banking and I, I did the things. Right. I got married. I built a house. I was crashing around. I made really good money. Right. Made really big impact, too. Right. Um, on my in, on the industries that I work in uh, with finance, tech, power and utilities as well as inside of the company, right? Really speaking of the mobilizing change for folks that look like me. But I left. I left corporate. I moved abroad. I lived in Cape Town, South Africa for a year. I lived in Nairobi, Kenya uh, for three years, about two and a half years. A piece of that, I actually came here to, to raise money for uh, Blaze Group and got married and we decided to stay and we settled in Huntsville now. But the work continues. And I agree with Ayana, right? What you see today, and this is not just for Blazers, but any company that has chosen to stay in the game for the long haul, which we have, right? These are steps along a journey for us at Blaze to connect wealth holders with wealth movers, right? These Black women entrepreneurs who are building and cultivating and, and, and spiritually pulling something out of their heart and their bodies and their minds to make it a tangible revenue generating entity right? Our wealth holders, right? And I have a responsibility in this lifetime to connect them with wealth movers, right? To make that process of, of cash moving back and forth more fluid and removing the friction, making sure that there's a level of trust that is real, right? Having folk that look like me on both sides because I did not see any of me outside of myself where I was, Right. Making sure that the understanding of the real needs, right, the real motivations, the real things that keep us up at night are understood on both sides so that we make solutions that feel like home. Right. That is the work that we are doing in this lifetime. Right. Blaze absolutely will have a fun. We will absolutely group. Group is not in the name for no reason. Right. But I have chosen. And I say this on purpose so that you heal your relationship with time have chosen to move at a pace that is sustainable and keeps me nourished and keep the folk that I show up for nourished to learn what I need to learn intimately about the Black woman that I am called to serve, to teach other folk outside of myself the frameworks that have allowed me to design solutions in Sub-Saharan Africa across three different countries that help folk who don't even have bank accounts repay not just everything they owe on a $40,000 tractor, but 107% of what they owe, right? They pay it down faster and own the asset faster and have collateral to grow their fleet with more tractors, right? Those are principles and beliefs and approaches and patience and, and, and understanding and, and, and turning what you hear into a solution, into a feature of a product, of a loan, right? These are the things that we are doing along this journey of making sure we connect wealth holders with wealth movers, right? And I am going at a pace that does not break me, but the group, in Blaze group is there for a reason, right? I stand with many 
And what I'm talking about is in the future, but I see it right now. I stand with many. For those who don't know, I've been writing uh, a curriculum and a book since February of this year. So I'm about uh, seven months into that, that journey. I'm publishing an educational textbook that can be used by colleges and uh, policymakers and uh, banking institutions, especially, right, to uh, follow proven frameworks and methodologies and approaches, right, to make capital more equitable, more accessible, to make finance more equitable, more accessible, right? And we're talking about cash moving, millions and billions and trillions of dollars that are moving with this mindset, right? Uh, we'll be training consultants, right? Because because one case ain't enough. That, that, that was never, that was never the goal. That was never, that's not the mission I'm on, right? Training consultants to be able to deploy these solutions and this knowledge and disseminate, right, this type of training in the same way that I would do it, right? That's ne that's next summer. And a fund to be built, right, that puts, that applies a lot of this knowledge and, this, and, the, and these practices and these methodologies in real life to disseminate more and more capital through Blaze Group, right? All of this is coming. And I am moving, Okay. I am moving at a pace that is sustainable and that keeps me nourished, right? And you should do the same. Venture capital, I must say this venture capital, we hear about it a lot more lately, right? Especially as uh, venture capital dollars have funded tech companies that we're familiar with now like Uber and Pinterest and Airbnb, right? And yes, it is true. It is true. Phyllis Funny said this a lot. And it is true that less than 1% of venture capital dollars goes to black women. Well under 1%. Less than one third of 1% goes to black women. And I also need you to understand that not all companies need venture capital dollars because if you are not willing or trying or intending <laughs> to grow at a hyper scale pace, at a hyper rate, right? 300, 400% revenue increase year over year, then venture capital dollars are not for you. They want to invest in companies that in seven years or less are going to either IPO, meaning selling stocks on the New York Stock Exchange or, you know, some other Dow, whatever, right? Probably won't be the Dow, right? <laughs> but where you're selling parts of your company to the public to buy, and so they get millions of dollars back. Or if you're not trying to exit in seven years or less, where somebody with a whole lot of cash, some big company, right, with a whole lot of cash buys you to absorb your company into theirs, and you get a lot of money and they get millions of dollars, right? If you're not trying to do those two things, then venture capital dollars are not for you anyway, right? We see tech companies do this a lot because it's easier for them to grow. Maybe it's health tech, maybe it's climate tech, right? Maybe it's ag tech. Right. But there are companies that exist that intend to be localized in neighborhoods and not 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 span super fast outside. Right. To have an intimacy and, and, and be a cornerstone of communities and to hold on to their lands that they show up in city council meetings and say, no, you're not about to bulldoze this down. We, we got plans for this. Right. Folk who actually have a 30 year vision, not a seven year exit strategy. And, and either it's fine. what I'm telling you is that it is OK. To hold on to that dream, right? And to protect that and go at the pace, right? That sustains that because it is important. There are other sources of capital, such as bank funding, where banks don't care about you growing 400% year over year. They just want you to generate cash flow to pay them back. They just want you to have revenue, right? They don't want ownership stake in your company. They just want you to make the minimum monthly payment. Right, that's an option. You you just heard that Arian is launching a two hundred million dollar debt fund. Right, VC capital does not fit every profile. And what is dangerous is when companies and founders feel pressured to give up the sustainable pacing and the ethical treatment of their clients and users. Right, to give up the vision they have for their company so that they grow to some unrecognizable size to appease folk who want to make money back and really don't intend on protecting or preserving the quality and experience and impact that has been created, 
right? So just understand that there are crowdfunding platforms where the people can, the, the power of the people, right, can back your dreams, right? That is actually what GoFundMe was started for, okay? GoFundMe was created to uh, support small businesses, right? Entrepreneurs that needed to, you know, get some some early capital from friends and family and make it easy to raise your friends and family. And we see, we've seen what that has um, evolved into as we, you know, use it to support funeral expenses for our family members and little softball league, you know, expenses for our little cousins, right? There are grants, right? There are angel investors who are just like, yeah, I got some extra money. I just retired and, you know, I want to make a little retirement. Whatever, right? There's so many options. Uh, revenue is one. That's a big one. That's my favorite one where you literally just figure out how to make the money, right? <laughs> you fund the business yourself. MailChimp. MailChimp. Many entrepreneurs are familiar with MailChimp. But they, um, I believe it was about 20 years. 20 years, the founders ran a consulting business on the side. Very different from MailChimp, okay? Like, had nothing to do <laughs> with MailChimp, but they entirely bootstrapped their company for 20 years, but it was 20 years, and they sold it to Intuit recently um, and made a couple billion, right? And that was just their money, right? Uh, so, yeah, so many options, y'all. So, um, heal your relationship with time and, and decide from the beginning how you want to end. Decide from the beginning how you want to end. And it is a, and, a, and a, if it is a 30 year vision you have where you are teaching your children how to protect the assets that you've created. Right. You're ensuring that, you know, somebody goes to get the finance degree to be able to run the finance and somebody goes to get the biology degree to be able to make the elixirs, you know, the, the, the formula, the mixes. Right. Make whatever you bottle, bottling up and selling or somebody goes and get the operations degree. Right. To be able to run the systems and the supply chain management. Do that. Right. If you want to have a 30 year vision with a 300 year impact on your community. Right. We are holding on to the land and sometimes some parts of the year y'all are selling lumber. Right. Monetizing that. Right. Where, you know, certain parts of the property are employing teenagers from the neighborhood. Right. Where no matter what's happening on out there, because you've hold, held on to it and three generations down because they know how to help, hold on to it because you've educated them on holding on to it and what to do when folks show up and try to buy it for little to nothing to extract from communities, right? They know what to do with it because you've educated them around it, right? And that's what Blaze is for. We are a financial education and consulting house, right? This is, this is not about... Um, just kick in. That happens, right? But like this, this space, this place is about building your muscle around finance so that you see more opportunities than you were able to a year ago. So that when problems arise, you already know what levers to pull. Right? So that when you look at your financial statements, you see stories. Like, ah, okay, like my expenses used to take up 80% of my revenue, now it's taking up 40%, and I got that much more liquidity to put into innovation, right? To put into buying property, to put in the stocks, right? So that money that's sitting, instead of sitting in the bank account, is just growing. This is about education. And so join the Blaze Pro community, okay? Join the Blaze Pro membership on the Blaze Group app. Uh, B is... Doing some dope things these these days. You can ask her to quiz you on any financial concept and she'll make it fun. Uh, you will chuckle a lot <laughs> the way she quizzes you. But if it's about, you know, B, I want, I want to, uh, I want you to quiz me on liquidity, right? I want you to quiz me on financial metrics. I want you to quiz me on understanding an income statement, whatever, right? It's available to you. Cash flow combos every single month. The next one is September the 26th. Pull up to that, right? Well, we just like this, but having like real intimate conversations about what's going on in the world. And when you think through how to be colder at generating revenue, how to protect your profits, right? How to be a, a more confident leader, right? As it relates to finance, because it makes you queasy today. You want to get to that point, right? Where you feel very sure of your decision making. You're sure of your ability to navigate recessions and know that the company's still going to stand. Because it's required in a 30-year vision. Right? 
the Blaze Plus membership is available to folks as well. And, and, and that's a Blaze Plus mentorship, right there, um, where you have one-on-one -on -one time with me every single month for 12 months. So, and, the, and there's thought partnership around things you're trying to tackle. We really align your strategic uh, business goals Okay, with your financial strategies, right? Or you have help negotiating terms with, with banks, right? And understanding which products you need and which products you don't, right? Where I'm helping you identify what your target should be, right? Like what, what should be a reasonable expectation for sales? What should be a reasonable expectation for uh, new clients? What should be a reasonable expectation for your ratio? Right? All of that stuff, right? Uh, Blaze Plus mentorship is $500 off for Blaze Pro members. So anybody, everybody, I would tell you, download the Blaze Group app and enroll in Blaze Pro membership so that you get okay, all of the value that Blaze is offering you. All right. So this is for learners. Like <laughs> this is for learners. And, and, and if you are committed to that, if you are interested in that, if you're willing to put in, in, in put in the exercise, the mental exercise, the physical, the emotional exercise that it takes to get cold and finance. This is home. And I want you to feel good stretching your arms out and your legs out here. Okay. Uh, love and light to everyone. I will be back soon. Uh, holla at me in the app. Thank you so much for tuning in to Blaze Group Radio. Remember, you have not yet met all of the people in your life who are going to love you. So keep going. Download the Blaze Group app for day-to-day -day support on your entrepreneurial journey. Until next time.